Okay, hello everybody out there in YouTube land. Today we're going to learn how to uh, lay out a common rafter. In our example right here, we're going to lay out a common rafter for a 12 foot wide building with a slope of 912. Uh, you can use this example for any type of uh, common rafter you're going to lay out, but in the set of plans they usually give you the, the width of the building, which is the span, and the slope. On every set of drawings they give you those two uh, pieces of information. And that's all you really need to lay out a common rafter. So the first step you have to do is select the material you're going to use to uh, uh, lay out your rafter. You have to do uh, some rough calculations and make sure you've got a piece of material that's long enough to lay out that common rafter. So we did some calculations previous to this video and we know that this piece of material is 2 by 6, 9 foot long, will be long enough to uh, construct that common rafter. Step 2, you want to mark the crown of the board. The crown of the board is a slight bow in the board and you kind of got to eyeball down the edge of the board. I look down here and I look down this edge and this one's pretty straight but you kind of want to choose which side has the crown in it. You always want to have the crowns up. So through that determination I mark that this side is the crown and I put an arrow with the crown facing up. The next step you want to do is mark your plumb cut at the ridge board. The plumb cut is the cut that's going straight up and down, perfectly vertical, when the rafter is in position. So there's a couple ways you can do it. The easiest way is to use the speed square. You take your speed square, place the flange on the edge of the board, the top edge of the board, lay it down on your material, and you have your pivot point there, you pivot it until you read 912 on your common cut. Don't confuse that with your hip and valley scale, you gotta use your common cut right there. Then you mark your plumb cut on this edge of the speed square. The next step is you want to determine the line length of the rafter. There's a couple ways to do it. If you buy a speed square from Swanson, they usually give you a blue book that goes with it. It has a set of rafter tables in there. But a lot of guys lose those. And another way you can do it is use your framing square. Okay, the framing square has a chart here, the line length of the common rafter per foot run. It's the first line on the framing square and you go down to your 912, you go 9 inch mark and it tells you your unit line length is 15. For an 812 it would be 14.42, 712 it would be 13.89, so on and so forth. So you're, we're going to use the 912, so we're going to use 15, that's our unit line length. And that unit line length is the basically the hypotenuse of a right triangle with a run of 12 and a rise of 9. That would be the unit line length right there. So the next step you have to do is you have to take your unit line length and multiply it by the run. The run is half the span. So we know the span is 12, that's the width of our building. The run would be 6, which is half of 12. So we take 15 and we multiply it by 6. So 15 times 6 equals 90 inches. So that gives us our line length of our common rafter. That's from the center of the ridge board to the plumb cut of the bird's mouth. The bird's mouth is a notch you put in your rafter that sits on your double top plate. Okay, so we, we determined that our line length of our rafter is 90 inches. The next step we want to do is measure from the plumb cut of the ridge board, or that's the plumb cut of the center of the building, 90 inches down the edge of the board. So we hook our tape right there, and we go down and we mark 90 inches. We want to mark it on the top edge of the board. You want to check to make sure our tape is in the correct spot down here. All right. Now we mark our 90 inches right there on the edge of our board. Okay, the next step we want to do is mark our plumb cut for our bird's mouth. We can do that the same way we mark the plumb cut at the ridge board. We set our pivot point on that 90 inches down here, pivot it until we read 9 on the common cut and then we mark our plumb cut right 
along the board right there. The next step is we want to mark our seat cut, which is our level cut that our bird's mouth is going to sit on. Since we're going to have a uh, two by four exterior wall, double top plate, we want to have three inches of bearing on our double top plate. So we want to come perpendicular to our plumb cut there, where we read three and a half inches, since a two by four, the actual dimension of a two by four is three and a half inches wide. And then we mark our seat cut. That's our seat cut on our uh, bird's mouth. And the next step, we want to mark our overhang. In our diagram here, it's calling for a one foot overhang, which is including the fascia. And we're going to use a two by six sub fascia. So we're going to subtract inch and a half from the one inch mark, or one foot mark, gives us ten and a half inches. So we're going to come perpendicular to our plumb cut in our bird's mouth and mark ten and a half inches. So we can set it like this, go perpendicular, go to where we read ten and a half inches, right there. Okay, put our mark there. And then we do our plumb cut for our overhang. We do it the same way, rotate it to where we read nine on our common cut and draw our plumb cut. Then the very last step we have to do to mark this rafter is subtract for half the thickness of the ridge board. Usually if you're using 2x6 rafters, you would use a 2x8 ridge board. So a 2x8 is an inch and a half thick. Half of an inch and a half is 3 quarters of an inch. So the next step we would do, we would subtract 3 quarters of an inch off our plumb cut here. So we put a mark, we put a mark at 3 quarters of an inch back. And then we have to draw a plumb cut through that mark there. So we can take our speed square again and put our 912, make sure we come through that mark, three quarters of an inch back, and draw our mark. Now all these plumb cuts could also be done with your framing square just by using nine on the tongue of the fr framing square and 12 on the blade. It would give you the same same angle as you can see. That's our same angle right there, 9 and 12. 9 and 12, and then we would 9 and 12 down here, and 9 and 12 there. That's a 9 and 12 sloped roof. And uh, that's the next step we would do. We would cut the rafter on this line here. We would cut it out, cut the bird's mouth out right here, and then we would cut it right here. And that would be our rafter, and when that rafter was in position, all those plumb cuts would be going straight up and down, they'd be perfectly vertical. And that's it for a common rafter. Once you cut one out, you can mark it as a pattern, and if it's a gable roof, you can use that for all your rafters throughout the whole building. A gable roof is one that just slopes from the uh, double top plate to the ridge board in two different directions. And the gable roof is made up of all common rafters. That's about it. So now what are we going to do with it? Now we're going to go down to the shop and we're going to cut it out. And we're going to see how it looks. All right, go ahead. Okay, now we're down here in the shop and we're going to uh, continue on our lesson. Right now we're going to cut out this common rafter. So the first thing you have to do is take care of some safety considerations. One thing is, make sure you have your safety glasses on. Okay? Next thing you have to do is you have to set up the saw. Before you set up the saw, make sure it's unplugged. And you want to make sure that you're set at a 90 degree angle, and then you set your depth of your saw. So you check your lower blade guard, first of all, make sure that's retracting. Then you set your depth just below the material you're cutting, about a sixteenth of an inch below your material. Okay, that looks pretty good right about there. You don't want to set the blade too deep. The next step is we're going to plug it in and we're all set ready to cut our rafter. So make sure you got your extension cord, make sure that's all OSHA approved. Okay, plug that in. And then we're going to start by cutting our plumb cut at our uh, ridge board. Okay, so we're going to line our board up there. Okay, the next step is we want to 
cut our bird's mouth. All right, in order to cut the bird's mouth, you want to just go through your seat cut just to that line there, and through your plumb cut to that line there, and then finish it off either with a handsaw or jigsaw. So, two hands on the saw. Okay, you can stop right there, and then we'll finish that up with a jigsaw or handsaw in a bit. Now I'm going to cut my uh, plumb cut on my rafter tail. Come around here. Okay, then the final step is to cut out the rest of the bird's mouth using a jigsaw, which is the easiest way, or a handsaw we find, or a sawzall, either one. So, set in your notch there. There we go. The next step was to check to see what a rafter would look like sitting on a double top plate in position. So, for a 912 slope roof, it would look approximately like that. 12 foot wide building.